Despite how much has been learned about the Earth and its more than 1,300 active volcanoes, several things in the field of volcanology remain a mystery. The most worrisome of these mysteries revolves around supermassive explosive volcanic eruptions that ejected so much sulfur dioxide into the atmosphere that the entire planet dramatically cooled for a time in what is known as a volcanic winter. While we know which volcanoes cause specific events such as during 1257 and 1815, the location of which volcanoes created massive eruptions in 535, 540, 1458, and 1808 remain a mystery. This is a potential problem, as if we do not know which volcanoes cause these events, potentially millions of people could live next to a volcano that is far more dangerous than is currently modeled, and they would never know. Yet, the effects of these voluminous explosive eruptions span the globe in more ways than one, such as due to the caldera-forming eruption of Mount Tambora in 1815. Specifically, in 1815, Mount Tambora in Indonesia produced a catastrophic eruption which caused the previously 4,298-meter-tall volcano to collapse into a vast caldera, with this eruption ejecting 120 million metric tons of sulfur dioxide into the atmosphere. This caused worldwide temperatures to drop by 2 degrees Celsius, which, while this might not sound like a lot, simultaneously occurred, along with a double-digit percentage drop in solar radiation hitting the ground. This caused widespread crop failures and famines in China, Europe, and India, causing 100,000 fatalities. Additionally, when some of these major eruptions occurred, it pushed already strained societies over the edge, leading to destructive wars. This is best shown via the 1783 Fischer eruption of the lack event of the Grimsund volcano in Iceland, which caused widespread crop failures in France and is today listed as a cause of the French Revolution. To me, the most interesting of these mystery eruptions involves a large-scale eruption likely twice the magnitude of the 1991 eruption of Mount Pinatubo, which occurred in 1808. And, despite how well documented this time period was, we have absolutely no clue which volcano produced such a catastrophic eruption, which was probably 20 times larger than the 1980 eruption of Mount St. Helens. This eruption ejected 19 million metric tons of sulfur dioxide into the atmosphere, causing worldwide temperatures to drop by 0.8 degrees Celsius. The best evidence we currently have to work with regarding this mystery are reports that seemingly indicate that the nation of Peru was the first to see the effects of these aerosols, meaning whatever source the eruption came from had blown sulfur dioxide in that direction. This eruption, which likely occurred on or around December 4th, 1808, thus could have only occurred in an unpopulated region high in the Andes, or a remote island volcano in the Pacific, such as one candidate I hypothesize which is now a submarine caldera in the nation of Tonga. However, Hector Sacristan recently wrote an article on the Volcano Cafe website outlining a new possible volcano candidate for the 1808 mystery eruption, which is strangely quite plausible. What I am referring to is a remote volcano with next to no literature about it located high within the Andes mountain range within the nation of Bolivia. Known as Tambo Queimado, it is a rhyolitic composition tuff cone. This tuff cone is massive, measuring nearly 380 meters in height and 6 kilometers in length. It contains two large explosion craters, the largest of which is 3,900 meters long and 100 meters deep. Based on the appearance of this volcano, it truly does appear that it only erupted once, meaning everything we see formed as the result of a single massive eruption. Additionally, grey ash-rich dunes surround the volcano, occurring up to a distance of 50 kilometers away. This volcano is seemingly in the correct position to have produced the sightings in Peru, and thus might be considered as an 1808 mystery eruption candidate. Yet, that is where the supporting evidence ends. Taking into account the size of the tuff cone and the surrounding ash deposits, I estimated a figure of 16 cubic kilometers for the eruption in question, which is a bit too small and sulfur dioxide poor to have created the 1808 mystery eruption. Also, by comparing the sheet of pyroclastic material to two other large Holocene explosive eruptions in the Andes, it appears older than both, suggesting an age older than 2300 BCE. But most importantly, current evidence suggests that whatever volcano produced a large eruption in 1808 must have erupted a composition of andesite. Yet, Tambo Queimado appears to have only ever erupted rhyolite. 
So, in my opinion, while Tembo Keimado could have theoretically produced the 1808 mystery eruption, I consider it far more likely to have produced a VEI-6 eruption in the early to middle Holocene, so it is probably not the 1808 mystery eruption source. Thanks for watching. If you would like to request a specific topic, please leave a comment below. Additionally, I would like to thank my new patron Judy B. Gardiner for supporting this channel.